Installation of the interface is illustrated here using an SKCU4IOE. Firstly, the frequency inverter is removed from the adapter unit. To install the customer interface, the control terminal must first be removed. Under the control terminal, there is a plastic plate, which in this case is loose underneath the control terminal. When screwing in the customer interface, take care that these two spaces are screwed in. If they are missing, new ones must be fitted. The customer interface clicks into these spaces and it is then fastened with these two screws, which are tightened to the specific torque. The control terminal is then screwed back into its original position. Now the control terminal is wired to the interface. We have the two connections, the 24V power supply wires and the system bus wires. The brown wire into terminal 43 of the control terminal and terminal 44 of the interface. The blue wire into terminal 40 of the control terminal and terminal 40 of the interface. The black wire into terminal 77 of the control terminal and the interface. Finally, the grey wire into terminal 78 of the control terminal and the interface. In this case, we have installed and wired an SKCU4IOE. Because of the different interfaces, the wiring is of course different and must be carried out according to the operating instructions. Once the interface is installed, it is important that the terminating resistor on both ends of the system bus is switched on. On the interface, the terminating resistor is switched on with these DIP switches and on the frequency inverter here. This handheld device is used to check the device whether it is correctly wired and whether there is communication. To check whether the interface is recognized, click on the parametrization. OK. If it is recognized on U2, you see I.O. extension, so the communication and wiring are all correct.